Welcome to Education Today. I'm Lauren Bowser. And I'm Ben Collins of the Armstrong High School in the Armstrong School District. Student success in school is crucial to helping them move on with their lives in the real world after graduation. As we spoke about a few weeks ago, there are many programs that are set up to help prepare them from core classes to electives, arts, music, and athletics. All of these programs can help build necessary skills that students will utilize in their post-secondary lives. We spoke a few weeks ago about the importance of SAT testing and what it means for stu a student's future. However, before a student can move on from high school, there are a few series of requirements that they must meet first. This week we are talking about testing that they must complete for high school graduation. To talk more about this tonight, we have Armstrong High School's academic principal in to talk about it. Welcome to Education Today. Please tell us briefly about yourself, your role with the district, and how long you've been working here. Uh, I've been in the school district since uh, about January 2000, so this is my 16th year in the school district. I've bounced around a little bit uh, between being the assistant principal or the principal at either containing middle school or containing junior high, depending on what we were called at the time. Uh, I've spent the last seven years at Ford City High School as the building principal there. Uh, through that time, I've been going back to school and, and training uh, to learn more about curriculum development and, and assessment and, and instruction as it goes forward. Testing is obviously important in today's education. What tests out there that students are required to take? Uh, required to take anywhere from third grade to eighth grade, uh, students are required to take the PSSA, which is an English language arts based test uh, on one side of it, and there's a mathematics test on the other side of it. In addition, there's, there's two benchmarks, I believe, in fourth and eighth grade where a student has to take a science PSSA as well, uh, with the idea of just seeing what their science experiences are. Beyond eighth grade, there, there's three tests that we have to take uh, according to the law uh, at the senior high level. One is in literature, which in our, in our school district, we chose after 10th grade English to take the literature exam. Uh, it, but biology, because we're required to test in the science, and the state has picked biology. So obviously, whenever our students finish their biology schedule, uh, they, they take that keystone exam. And, all, and then the last one is algebra one. So whenever a student finishes algebra one, they take that culminating exam. Um, what exactly are the PSSAs? Uh, the PSSAs, uh, probably the easiest way to put it is a benchmark test to help determine where a student is at the end of a grade level. Uh, the state in, in their regulations has it broken down into uh, students should know certain things in certain areas by the time they reach the end of a grade level. So what the PSSA does is it allows us to one, examine where the student is academically at the specific grade levels. In addition, what it does is it allows us to reevaluate ourselves to see are we doing the job that we should be doing. And if, if we see huge gaps with a great number of students, and maybe it's something that we're not teaching or we're teaching incorrectly, and we need to go back and fix it. Very similar to what you would go if you go into a doctor's office and this doctor prescribes a lot of tests, you know, just to see what's going on in your body, because you can't always see what's going on. They, they look at a lot of tests, they gather the data, and they try to make conclusions based on what those test results show. We do the same thing in education using things like the PSSA. Um, what time of the year do each of these tests take place? Uh, the PSSA, they, 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 they fluctuate the dates over the years, but right now I think they're, they're pretty confident in, in trying to do it as late in the year as possible. So the PSSA is done in April and it pretty much takes up the entire month. I believe there's a week a set aside for the English language arts test. There's a week set aside for the mathematics test, and then for those fourth and eighth graders, there's a, a week set aside for that for the science test as well. Um, what impact does a student's score have on their future? It, it depends on how an individual school district uses that data. Uh, for us, we use it again. We, we look at the, the the teachers of what of how they're teaching in our curriculum to make sure when we see wide gaps with a, with a group of students that we know we have something to correct. If it's an individual thing, we, we, we do some prescriptive work, again, similar to what a doctor might do, in order to help that student make sure they don't fall behind in anywhere. Okay. Um, what marks are students expected to reach in the PSSAs? Uh, there, there's a scaled score that's established. 
and they're expected to score what, what's defined as proficient. Obviously, there is one more mark above it called advanced, and those students are really excelling. And we look to see what kind of things we can do for those students to continue to help them really reach the potential that they have. Uh, there's two other marks that are listed that are not proficient, and those are basic and below basic. And again, when the student reaches those areas, we really look at what we need to do to help them reach where they're supposed to be for their grade level. Um, what impact do student scores have on each individual school or the school district as a whole? Well, the law has changed on that in the last uh, last couple years. Uh, there is there's an item called this uh, the SPP score. Uh, st I think it's school profile, performance profile, school performance profile. Uh, that is part of all of our evaluations now. Every professional employee that's in a building, that score is added into their, their overall rating. In addition, if I'm a teacher of a specific area, it's a spe specific tested area, those results of my students also get it added into my score to help determine whether I'm doing my job as a teacher or a principal in my case. When should students start like preparing in the year for the test? Uh, from day one. Uh, the whole curriculum, the, the, way the, the way the PSSA specifically is built is it's supposed to be a culminating activity of what happened to you during that school year. Uh, so if we start on day one when the students walk into the door, everything that you do during that school day should lead you to your ultimate performance at the end. It's very similar to taking a final. Mm -hmm. What do we do at the school level to help prepare them for the PSSAs? We, we do various things. Uh, obviously, I, I've already touched on the fact that if we see a student that didn't reach a proficient level the year before and they still move on to grade level because the test doesn't help determine whether you pass or fail a grade, what we do is we, we examine what specifically is it that the student's not, not having success with and we work on that specific skill while still building their next grade level skills. So if I'm a fifth grader that can't multiply, and that's a pretty broad category of mul multiplying, you know, obviously when they're in sixth grade we're going to continue to work on those multiplication facts while we also continue to grow so that we don't leave any holes in their education. What can parents do at home to help the students prepare? I, I, well, for the test specifically, I, when it's test time, you know, make sure they eat breakfast, make sure they get a good night's sleep. But as the school year progresses, mm -hmm. keep working with their, with their child's teachers. You know, in the elementary, it's one, maybe two teachers. Mm -hmm. At the seventh and eighth grade level, you're dealing with more teachers uh, throughout the building. But work with, work with them, ensure that they're doing things like homework, studying, those little essential items uh, that most parents do already. What guidelines should students follow to ensure that they are as prepared as possible? Can you repeat the question? I um, apologize. What guidelines should students follow to ensure that they are as prepared as possible? I, I, again, I, I think it comes down to what, what they're doing in the classroom. If you literally do nothing in the classroom for three, nine weeks, you're not going to score a proficient score. Uh, and, and then we have a, a different issue. I don't think it's uh, that's more of a behavioral issue, perhaps than what you might see uh, as an academic performance. Obviously that behavior though is affecting the academic. So the students, again, make sure they're doing things like their homework, make sure they understand, take advantage of any services that are being handed to them, whether it's additional teacher time with, you know, for example, in, in the elementary we have Title I reading, uh, where they come in and they work specifically with the reading skills that the student may be struggling with for whatever reason it may be. At the secondary level, we, we, do, we have specific classes to assist with reading. We also have uh, math tutors that are available throughout the day where we pull a student out from class and give them some additional math assistance as needed. Okay, okay we're going to take a short break and then be back with more Armstrong School District education today. Stick around. Success. We see it every day. Hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes, internationally known faculty who are committed to your success. Real world experiences to guide you on your career and life path, an alumni network 120,000 strong. I'm IUP President Mike Driscoll. Visit us. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I'm Cindy McRae, Director of ARC Manor Addiction Recovery Center. ARC Manor is committed to confidential quality services 24 hours a day, including fully licensed residential, partial hospital, and outpatient treatment programs. With 39 years of experience in addiction treatment, 
Art Manor puts an emphasis on the needs of special populations including women, co-occurring disorders, and adolescents. For more information, call 724-548-7607 or 800-323-1333. Brought to you by the Armstrong Indiana Drug Free Communities Coalition. It's hard to explain. It just became home. There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you. Amazing internships and everywhere, programs that help to find a job that is right for you. It's what IUP is about, a commitment to your success. See it for yourself. Visit us, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Vince McCurry, Executive Director of The Open Door. Worried? Scared? Confused? Not sure where to turn for help? The Open Door, a behavioral health organization, has a full range of addiction counseling services and mental health crisis intervention services which may be able to help. Call 724-465-2605 or 1-877-333-2470. The Open Door, Steps Towards Hope, Courage, and Recovery. Brought to you by the Armstrong, Indiana Drug-Free Communities Coalition. We're back with Armstrong School District's Education Today. Today we're talking with Mr. Michael Kamenos about various testings that students are required to take and the impact that those tests have. We've spoken about PSSAs now, let's move on to Keystones. I understand there have been some changes regarding those. Uh, the test itself, no, nothing's changed mm -hmm. there. It's the graduation requirement. Uh, probably within the last month, the state legislature and the governor signed a, a, a new law, kind of putting a, a pause on, on the graduation requirement. Uh, some of the reasons they put in behind putting that, gradu that pause on there is they wanted to re-examine the uh, the project-based assessment. Mm -hmm. If a student failed the Keystone exam itself three times, uh, there was another out for them as far as developing the project. Uh, they want to make sure the project's administered fair across the state. Mm -hmm. uh, some school districts have more resources than other school districts, and that's one of the reasons why they wanted to just take a, take a stronger look. Uh, right now it's a two-year moratorium. What was or is the point of the current Keystone exams and what did they mean for students and school districts? Uh, the current point, again, is very similar to the PSSA. One, we want to know what the student knows at the end. Uh, the whole point of the Keystone exams is a result of federal law that requires us to do some kind of benchmarking in the senior high years. We test PSSA up through 8th grade. This replaced the 11th grade version of the PSSA, which most students your age wouldn't have run into that at this point. Uh, it's been going for a number of years. So th this replaces it. It's now subject specific versus standard specific. Uh, we know what a student should know at the end of Algebra 1, so we're going to test them on what should have been taught to them during, the end of, during their Algebra 1 time. Same with biology. We know what a student should have at the end of a biology course based on the standards that are established, so we test them on that, and additionally with literature as well. What does the postponement of this test mean for students in school districts? The big difference would be is, is the stress levels off as far as the need, the need mm -hmm. to worry about it for graduation. Uh, as far as the way we're proceeding here and most districts are proceeding, we're still required to give the tests. Mm -hmm. We still give the tests at various times throughout the year. We still provide the same services we provide to the students. We're still moving forward with the projects even mm -hmm. though it's not a requirement to graduate. We want to make sure our, our, our students graduate with the skills that are prescribed mm -hmm. uh, to all students across the state. I call the Keystone test what I call the great equalizer. You know, a lot of people make comparisons between school districts, uh, the wealthier school districts and around the suburbs of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I say if our students are scoring equal to those students and somebody actually makes a comparison, mm -hmm. then it then makes our students look just as good as those students in the suburban mm -hmm. districts. Mm -hmm. For younger students, can you give any insight into what they should expect in regards to keystones or similar tests in the future? 
I, I would say the, the, the test itself may change. Uh, the state uh, local educators are always looking at reevaluating assessments that we give the students. We always, again, we, look, we examine our curriculum. Same idea with the Keystones. Whenever we see wide gaps, are we not teaching something correctly? Is it the delivery of my instruction that's not getting across to my students? So those are areas that we constantly worry about. So as far as how it affects students in the future, I, I think they're going to continue to see the same types of things happen. They're going to, if they struggle, we're going to still provide the services that they need to be successful. And we want all of our students to be successful. What are the current graduation requirements for students? Uh, the graduation requirements in our district are, are simply uh, what's listed in the academic handbook. You know, four years of English, uh, four years of social studies with certain courses being specifically laid out, uh, four years of mathematics, um, three years of science, as well as a total number of credits at the end of, the, at the end of, your, of your four years from ninth grade to twelfth grade. Uh, th those regulations haven't changed and they've been pretty tried and true. Public speaking, health, those items, those courses that we require all students to take. What purpose do these requirements serve for our students to successfully move forward? We believe that the Keystone exams are foundational type tests for our students. Uh, they're not predictors of how well they may do in college, but we want to make sure that the expectation of students that graduate from Pennsylvania, these are the minimum skills that they should have. So we want to make sure our students have those skills so that they can be successful whenever they move on. So they can apply the knowledge that they picked up, whether it, again it's in the literature test, the biology test, or the algebra test. They can take those skills and apply it to whatever uh, work they may go into or post-secondary training they may run into, whether it's college or, or tech school. What does the school district do you help the students prepare for and complete their graduation requirements? We constantly look at providing tutoring for students. We're constantly looking at various points of data. We have benchmarking throughout the school year to see where students are, how they're progressing. We look at the final assessments. In addition, the way we're, we're, we programmed our teachers to teach is, is through a method of formative assessment. Uh, many students will see that their, their teachers describe learning targets, so they might have them written on the board or the way they present things. They're talking about the specific skills they want the student to learn at the end of that period. Part of that has to be a performance of understanding. They can't just look at you and say, oh, well, you get it, but you don't get it. They have to know. They have to see some kind of evidence that shows that they attained what that target was for the day. And then their feedback throughout the classroom period has to lead them has to help guide that student to attain the, the bullseye on that target. And if it doesn't, then they need to take a step back and look, what do I need to do for these students to attain that target, plus still move forward in the future? Are there any type, other types of testing that students are subjected to in their school careers? If so, what are they? Uh, other tests from the state, no. The Keystone tests are really the end of the state's testing uh, as it stands right now. Uh, we obviously have our, our localized assessments that we do mostly in the classrooms, you know, unit exams, chapter tests, quizzes, uh, project-based assessments that, that we, we do naturally within our classrooms, even if, even if it's a lab experience. Uh, in addition, uh, we, we want our students to obviously take the, the SAT, the ACT, uh, things that will show that, that, that readiness. In addition, at the end of our AP courses, we do have the AP exams that we require our students to take, again, as a culminating activity, very similar to what we do with the Keystone exams. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add for the benefit of our viewers? Uh, we constantly look at the, the programs that we offer here. Uh, we, we have two quality high schools in our school district, one that's a very large school, one that's a small school. I think we offer the best of both worlds in our school district, and I believe we offer a quality, pro quality program in addition to what we have at our vocational tech school with Lenape Vote Tech. I, I truly believe that we have an opportunity in Armstrong County to really uh, to show our students are excelling in, in various facets, whether, again, they go into college setting or if they go into a career or workforce uh, development type program or they just go to work or the military mm -hmm. and I truly believe that we, we have the potential to show that we, we are able to compete with anybody else across the state. Mm -hmm. Well that's our show for tonight. I'd like to thank our guest Mr. Michael Commodus, an academic principal in Armstrong School District for coming in to talk to us. 
I'd also like to thank our student film crew of Armstrong High School, led by teacher Mr. Josh Miklos. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District DVD copies of this and all Education Day programming can be requested by contacting Chris Garitano at Armstrong Junior Senior High School. Visit our website for updated news and information about the district. Have a great week.